This Learn Electrics video is part of four of our mini series on protective devices, where we take a simplified look at the different types of RCD and the types of tests that we must carry out and those tests that are optional. The first question that always pops up is, what is an RCD? An RCD is a residual current device that will monitor the earth leakage currents in a circuit. In simple terms, if the input current on the line is the same as the output current on the neutral, then the earth leakage must be zero amps and the device will not trip. And this follows Kirchhoff's laws that what flows into a circuit must exactly flow out. All the input currents will mathematically equal all the output currents. But if there is a current leakage along the earth conductor, this leakage will add to the input current on the line, but it will not add to the neutral current. There will now be a difference in current between line and neutral, and if the difference exceeds a preset value, the trip coil will cause the trip mechanism to operate and open the contacts to make the circuit safe. These are the basic parts of a general purpose RCD. The input current flows along the line conductor and around a magnetic toroidal core, and then to the points of use, a socket outlet in this case. The neutral currents that flow back will also pass around the toroid, but they are wound the opposite way to the line. This means that if the input and output are the same, they will cancel each other out with a net residual current of zero. In this case, the RCD does nothing. It just sits there, allowing current to flow. Every RCD device will have a test button, and pressing this button puts a known fault current on the device that imbalances the toroidal core and simulates a fault. When the RCD detects a fault current that is above its preset value, the trigger mechanism will operate in fractions of a second and open the switch contacts. This will isolate the downstream parts and make the user safe. RCDs are available in various trip ratings. These are often labelled as I delta N, the current difference in the neutral. For protection of persons and livestock, an I delta N of 30 milliamps is chosen, and most of this video is about 30 milliamp devices. A 30 milliamp RCD will give additional protection to TNS and TNCS circuits where fuses or circuit breakers are used for fault protection. A 30 milliamp device will also give fault protection to TT circuits where the high ZS of the earth fault path is often too high for the operation of fuses and breakers within 0.4 seconds. And RCDs up to 300 milliamps may be used for fire protection. What variations of RCD are there? Let's take a look. Shown here are the common RCD devices and their standard numbers BS or BSEN. Notice that what most of us call an RCD, the BSEN61008 device, is actually an RCCB. RCD, or residual current device, is the name for the whole family of these devices, and the regular BSEN61008 device is part of the RCCB group. The basic RCCB detects residual currents only. It cannot respond to overloads or overcurrents where the line and neutral are the same value. RCBOs to BSEN61009 will detect residual currents and overloads of current. They will have an I delta N, a residual tripping current rating, and an overload current rating, so an RCBO can perform the functions of an RCD and a circuit breaker. And then we have the standard numbers for socket outlet RCDs and the portable versions of RCDs that can be moved about and plugged in where needed. Different types of RCD are available depending on what they are designed to detect. Older appliances and equipment were predominantly AC only, and fault currents were of an AC type only. But modern appliances can have built-in computer circuitry that puts DC or high-frequency components onto the conductors. The chart shows that the older type AC device is ideally suited to circuits where only smooth, sinusoidal AC fault currents are likely. The remaining types, A, F and B are for circuits where modern equipment and appliances can overlay DC and high frequency components onto any fault currents. 
Why does this matter about DC components being present in residual fault currents? It matters because there is a thing called blinding or blinding the core. Any DC currents may saturate the magnetic toroidal core and render the RCD inoperative. This means that the RCD may not operate when there is a genuine fault and a real need for the circuit to be isolated. Type A, F and B devices are designed to overcome this problem of blinding. If you have an older multifunction tester with a no-trip loop test setting for measuring earth fault loop impedance, one that doesn't trip the RCD, this is how it does it. The tester will put a DC current onto the AC fault current and saturate the core, preventing the RCD from tripping whilst it is being tested. It will blind the core during the test. What sort of equipment or accessories might produce DC residual currents and potentially blind the core? Think about variable speed drives, LED lighting, washing machines, dishwashers and tumble dryers, or solar PV and inverter systems. Then there is electric vehicle charging equipment or induction hobs and IT equipment. And the list could go on. Lots of things in modern houses, factories and offices. And every day there is new must-have electronic equipment being invented. What sort of equipment might this be? Domestic installations with modern appliances etc might have LED lighting, IT equipment, induction hobs and electric vehicle charging positions. Whilst commercial installations, offices, warehouses and similar may have many LED lights in use, rows and rows of them and large amounts of IT equipment, other office equipment and so on, all with electronics. We could have industrial premises with modern manufacturing machinery and robotic assembly equipment that may incorporate variable speed drives or uninterruptible power supplies, IT equipment and LED lighting. Or sports facilities with water pumps for the swimming pools etc that have circulation pumps with variable speed drives. And we must be conscious of new equipment and the possibility of onboard electronics when replacing equipment and accessories or providing new circuits that include the latest technology. Consider the question, will this new equipment compromise any Type AC RCDs that may be installed? Will the present level of safety for the user be affected? Where would we use these different types of RCD? Where would we use a Type A or a Type B, for instance? Type AC are the general purpose RCDs that we've installed for many years the basic RCD if you like. This type of RCD should only be used where there are simple AC only sinusoidal waveforms which was the case many years ago. Type AC RCDs are designed for alternating current where there will be no DC components or complex waveforms present. These general type RCDs may be installed where the equipment in use does not contain any electronic components. In other words, they have purely resistive inductive or capacitive loads. They are suitable for appliances like electric showers and immersion heaters, electric ovens and the standard type of kitchen hobs and ideally suited to the tungsten filament lamps, the old 60 watt and 100 watt lamps. A type A RCD can be used to directly replace a type AC device as this type of RCD can be used for alternating current waveforms that are purely sinusoidal as in the type AC and for residual pulsing DC currents as shown in the symbol here. They should be used to protect circuits where equipment and accessories may contain electronic components and examples might include things like certain lighting equipment, light dimmers or LEDs. It could be induction hubs or electric vehicle charging points as installed in more and more homes. Then there is class 1 IT equipment or inverters and power supplies for class 2 equipment. A type F device can replace a type AC or a type A RCD. The type F device should be used for equipment and appliances incorporating frequency control such as washing machines, dishwashers and tumble dryers or equipment with synchronous motors and air conditioning controllers with variable speed drives plus some power tools also with variable speed motors. This leads us on to type B RCDs. These can replace all the other RCD types, the type AC, type A and type F. 
A Type B RCD is suited to single phase and three phase equipment. Simple sinusoidal AC, pulse DC with frequency controllers and with inverters and equipment with significant DC residual currents, such as uninterruptible power supplies, lifts, escalators, industrial machines and welding equipment, plus solar PV systems and electric vehicle charging equipment with a residual DC current above 6 mA and many more equipment sorts. Finally, we have the S-Type device and the device will show the S symbol along with one or more of the other symbols as shown. This is a time delayed device designed to respond a little slower. A time delayed RCD cannot be used for additional protection since it cannot achieve the required disconnection time of 40 milliseconds for protection of persons and livestock. A type S RCD can be installed upstream of one or more non-delayed type RCDs to achieve discretion. There is a mistaken belief that installing a bigger RCD upstream of two smaller RCDs will give discretion in tripping during a fault on just one RCD. In other words, the device nearest the fault will trip first. This might not always happen, especially if the fault current exceeds the tripping current of the bigger device. Now is potluck as to which trips first. The only way to be sure is to install an S-type upstream of the other two RCDs. Type AC devices should only be installed where there is certainty that there is no residual DC on the circuit and that where Type AC RCDs are installed there is no likelihood of there ever being any. Where equipment is being installed with electronic components, the electrician should inform the customer of the potential problems, i.e. the present Type AC RCD may not give the required level of protection because of blinding of the core. And then a recommendation to install Type A devices can be made and the customer's decision should be recorded on the test certificate, especially if they decline the upgrade to Type A RCDs. Many consumer units are now fitted with Type A as standard, as a future-proofing initiative. Type F and Type B RCDs can be installed, but the cost of these devices can be prohibitive, unless they are actually needed. A little bit on testing now, and this video is about what tests are needed. A separate video from Learn Electrics will show the actual how-to of testing. The mandatory tests are easy. They are exactly the same tests that we've done for many years using the same settings, the same results, and no, you don't need a different test meter to do the mandatory tests. The multifunction tester that you've always used will do them. The first test is the half test, half the tripping current of the device. We're dealing with 30 milliamp RCDs in this video, so half of 30 milliamps is a test current of 15 milliamps. If you have an older test meter, just test away. If you have a newer meter with options for type AC, type A, etc., then set it to type AC, regardless of what type RCD you are testing. At 15 milliamps, the device should not operate. All device types should be tested at half their rated tripping current to test for so-called nuisance tripping. A 30 milliamp device should trip between about 18 milliamps and 28 milliamps, so testing of 15 milliamps should not cause the RCD to operate. Now we do a one times test. So, for a 30 milliamp RCD, we have a test current of 30 milliamps. Again, we will set the test instrument to type AC for all RCD types that are being tested. Now the device should operate in accordance with the table below. Half times and one time test results should be recorded on the schedule of test results or minor works certificate as appropriate. And we should also press the test button to confirm that this action trips the RCD. If you carried out the tests at 0 degrees and 180 degrees to check both halves of the waveform, then record the highest trip time, in other words, the worst case reading. There are optional tests that can be carried out, but they are not a requirement of the wiring regulations. If it was me, and I had a test meter that could do the further tests, then I would do them for my own peace of mind and to prove that the devices do function correctly with these extra tests. This table shows the optional tests that can be carried out. These tests 
are not a requirement of BS7671 wiring regs, but we should make a note of the test results in the remarks column of the schedule of test results or on the back of the certificate. Type AC testers or older testers cannot carry out Type A or Type B tests. You must have a tester made specifically for these optional tests. This is only a brief and simplified introduction to RCD types and the tests that are required. Another video will show you how to conduct each of the tests. Remember that RCD testing is live testing and always practice safe working. You should be competent at live testing. Otherwise, seek the advice and guidance of a person skilled in these tests. And do practice the tests on a regular basis. The more that you practice, the better you become. Thank you for watching, it really is appreciated, and we hope that you found this video useful. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos, and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you'll find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget, you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.